we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Rock Shop with Ralph, your source for all things entertainment. Tonight, we got a Brooklyn native and another drummer in the house. He's 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 with some of the biggest names in rock today, such as Eric Martin, Chris Jericho. He has his own solo. He has his own band, ZO2, which opened for Kiss. And he's an actor and a best-selling author on Amazon. His name is Joey Licious. I don't know why he calls himself Joey Licious, <laughs> but Joey Casada's in the house. How you doing, Yo! Joe? <laughs> What's up, Rob? How are you, brother? Awesome, baby. Kicking life in the nuts. I, I fumbled a little bit of the words because I haven't been around in a couple of weeks, so I had to get all my bearings straight. But <laughs> everybody gets everybody gets the idea. No, you sound beautiful. Yeah, Joey Licious is just an alter ego. That's my uh, my alter personality so uh joe you call me joey for now since we're friends i call you joey that's it <laughs> and, and and you know what brooklyn native i'm a queens native and my accent is always discussed in in the uh in the a lot of interviews but i know you're not going to hear my accent because you're from brooklyn you sound perfect to me i don't know what anyone's talking about right 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 but you know you don't sound like that you sound you have per nice diction nice diction <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, it comes out every once in a while, a couple of drinks, it, it gets a little heavier. Uh, you know, I try, I try to, uh, over the years, you know, do a little acting and stuff like that. My audio book, I try to, I try to clean it up a little bit, but, uh, as anyone who's heard the, uh, intro to my audio book, the forward Chris Jericho <laughs> makes fun of my accent pretty handily. So right? he, it, it's still there. I mentioned this a lot because I've done interviews with people from France, from England. It's hysterical when you got me talking with the A's and the O's, you know, and then you got all the proper proper English and 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 and, and French, and they're like, where, "Where are you from? Are you are you a gangster?" You know, they go, they say that. I laugh, but you know, then I had Vinny Apice on. He's from Brooklyn. Of I had Carmine Apice on. I had, I had a couple of guys from Goodfellas. I had uh, John Fiore on. I had Robert sure. Funaro, Joey D'Onofrio. And they it, they don't they don't hear it. They're just like me and you talking. No, it's funny. Listen, if, if the name ends in a vowel, we excuse how they speak. That That's it, baby. But um, yeah, I'm glad to have you. I'm a drummer as well. I, you're a phenomenal drummer for some of the biggest acts. Um, what we're going to talk about first is your best-selling Amazon wrestling book. Wrestling with Joey Licious. I mean, yes. how the hell do you feel about that, Joe? Oh, it's been great. It's actually my third book I've released, uh, self-published through Amazon. All three of them were number one sellers. This this new Joey Licious book was the second part in, in the series. Uh, it's based on, I'm not sure if anyone, your fans know about me. So, you know, I do a, a little short series called Wrestling with Joey Licious. Love it. Love it. It, it's, it stars myself, of course, and all the greatest legends from uh, yesterday, like from the 80s and the 90s. Over the, over the course of the, the first season, we had Roddy Piper, Jimmy Snooker. Uh, we just, the newest one we just did was Jake the Snake Roberts. Mitch That's my Foley. favorite. We got everyone who's anyone on this show. And, you know, once COVID hit, we were set to go into full production you know, we had some offers from some networks and stuff like that. And then when, when COVID hit, everything got shut down. So instead of, you know, sitting on my ass, I, I don't know how to do that. So I pivoted and I said, you know what, let me turn. I had two seasons of scripts. Me and my partner wrote out our scripts. We had two seasons worth. We said, you know what? We can't film. Nobody's doing anything. Let's pivot and we'll turn this into a comedy novel. We split the two seasons up into two books. First, uh, you know, we released the first first book. You know, I, I didn't think it was going to do anything. I figured, ah, you know, I'll try to release Hold it and out, see yeah. what happens. Yeah, no big deal. I, I, I wasn't doing anything during COVID anyway. Number one bestseller on Amazon, praised throughout the wrestling community. Um, it's about me, you know, this 40-year-old guy struggling, always tried, wanted to become a professional wrestler, never made it in the business. And I'm still wrestling in like high schools and, and, you know, for second graders and nuns and stuff like that. And throughout the course of the show, wrestling legends appear to me in my imagination to give me advice, which always turns out bad. Right. Well, and I got to mention, cause I'm, I'm 51. Uh, I grew up in the golden age of wrestling. Uh, you know, Bob Backlund, Jimmy Snooker, Tito Santana, Iron Sheik, you know, and all the, uh, Jake the snake. Hulk Hogan, you know, all these guys are on there. One of my favorite episodes that you had was just the one 
with Jake the Snake, where you're doing the you're doing the Saturday Night Fever, and eating the uh, slice of pizza. We filmed right under the Brooklyn, uh, uh, right under the Verrazano Verrazano. Bridge. Yeah, we took a little slice out of uh, Saturday Night Fever when Tony and and uh, oh my God, what was it? What was the girl's name? Tony and oh um um oh my God, Donna Pesco. Yes, so they're sitting under the bridge. So we, Jake and I, kind of uh, play off that scene, and yeah. it gets it gets a little heated. And by the, you know, I, I don't want to give it away, but by the end, Jake throws the DDT on me, and I'm I'm unconscious. Yeah, but you could you could see all these little short episodes. They're five to seven minute episodes. You can go to my YouTube channel at Joey Casado, but they're also on Amazon Prime right now too. So check them out. Right. I just want to mention one of my favorite plots of that episode was, and it's funny because. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, you could call me a metalhead. I'm hard rock to the bone, you know, but Far From Over oh. by Frank Stallone always gets me, baby. Save me, darling. I am down, but I am far from over. And, and Jake the Snake tells him, what about staying alive? It's one of the best sequels ever. <laughs> and you go, are you kidding me? It's one of the worst. The guy was wearing a mankini. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you something. All these wrestlers, Jake included, they're so great to work with. But right. they're so they're still, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this show. These guys are still so electric on camera. And you know, they obviously they can't wrestle anymore. Some of them are in the 50s, 60s, even 70s. Right. And they can't wrestle anymore, but they're still so great on camera, electric, funny, sharp, super fast. So, you know, we feed them this this loose outline of a script. And we basically make them have fun with it. And and they're all phenomenal. Everyone from, you know, the Iron Sheik trying to get him to do lines. And Mick Foley. Mick, Mick Foley was incredible. We had to redo so many shoots with Mick Foley because he was coming up with so much fun dialogue that he would crack the crew up and we'd have to retake the shot. It's funny because uh, everybody, all well, my fans know, I grew up in Queens and I live on the island now. And you see Mick Foley all the time. That's He's great. out. Oh, just walking around. You're like, you're walking in the mall and, and he's he's just walking. And I'm like, holy shit, there's Mick Foley, you know? Yeah, just a regular guy. Just a regular, regular guy. But to my fans, uh, wrestling fans that are from my age group, our age group, that you love those wrestlers that he mentioned, you got to watch these shorts that he has. They are so funny. They're so entertaining. And you get to see your old heroes and they're still active and they're great. And, and Joey is great in it. I'm telling you, he really... He really does the part very well, and and I can't say enough about it. I, I get a kick out of it. I was laughing my ass off at a lot of them. Thanks, brother. Yeah, but, it's, it's so much fun to do. Right. Um, I got one major question for you. Is wrestling real? No, I'm only kidding. I'm only, <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Is, you know what? Give, let Mick Foley give you a body slam. Yeah, right? I know. I know. No, no. Stand no, up I, and ask if it's real. I'm not one of those guys. I'm not one of those I guys. Had, I had Roddy Piper. Of course, you know. My wife always kids around with me and tells me, you know, there's there's no real. You're not even filming a show. You just want to go play with these wrestlers and right. have them do their moves on you. So by the end of every every one of these episodes, the wrestlers are usually putting their finisher on me. And I had Roddy Piper, you know, put put a sleeper on me, and not you know not full. It's we're acting. I'm not a wrestler. I'm an actor. So I don't I don't know how to re really wrestle. He put me in that sleeper. The strength, in, you know, even right. at his age. I couldn't move. I was like, holy shit. Roddy Piper. I came here to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And I'm all out of bubble gum. That was great, that movie. <laughs> you know that line's in my short, too. I know. I know. Yeah, I know. I know. They live. Um, do you ever pinch yourself and say, I can't believe I I'm, I'm acting with some of my heroes growing up? Because you love wrestling. I mean, and these guys were all the guys we grew up with. I mean, you know, before it became Titanic the way it is now yeah this is what we watched you know it's it's funny everyone always asks me even you know even you know we'll get into my musical career too but you know they always ask me well how did you get you know the iron sheik to film with you how did you get jake the snake to film with you it's just hustle and hard work you gotta Absolutely. You, get, you know you get yourself out there you pitch the idea you hustle you make it work there's you know there's no trick you're not, you know, I'm not paying these guys a fortune. It's not like I'm rich and, you know, this. I have a giant budget for this show right now. You know, we're, we're doing this all on the fly and these guys are into it because of my pitch, my hard work. I track down their emails. I track down their agents. I track down their phone numbers. Whatever I got to do to get in touch with them, pitch this project, 
show them what the show was about. And once I got the first guy on board who was Superfly Jimmy Snooker, he was my very first guy. Once I got him and I had my short filmed with him where, you know, we're sitting on a park bench and, and by the end of the, the, the little short, obviously, Snooker's blasting me in the head with a coconut. By the end of that short, and I could show other people the concept of this show, I would wake up in the morning and I would have messages from the mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart. Rick Flair texted me, hey, Joe, so-and-so told me about your project. Give me, give, give me a buzz. You know, I, I, was, I was getting contacted by them. King Kong Bundy left me a message. It was like, what the hell is happening right now? Wow, that, that's great. And, and just like me, too, I do all my own stuff. People are going to be saying, how the hell did you get Joey Casada? How the hell did you get Joey Licious on your show? I mean, it was hard work and that, it was hard work and dedication. No, I pinched myself too, Joey. Like I said, I, I did over the past year about 70 interviews, and I and I'm a drummer as well as you. Drummers are big on my show. I had Carmine Apice, Vinny Apice, Simon Wright, um, Mike Arbini from Taiketo, who was Michael Clayton. There's no secret. Drummers are the easiest to talk to. They're the most friendly. They have no egos. They're not maniac lead singers and, or, or egotistical lead guitar players. We're the fun ones. I know, but and we are, I was going to say, but we are crazy and we can't sit still. <laughs> I mean, you see me rocking back and forth in my chair. I can't fucking sit still. Yeah, look uh, at me, dude. I'm, I'm doing 150 million projects at once. I can't sit still either. I'm right, right. Me. That's what they're all telling me. How do you do this? You know, you got a regular job. You're doing this. You got your band. You know, we don't stop. And our mind is always going. A mile a minute, you know, 100%. but that's great. So my fans, wrestling fans, especially, you got to get Joey's book, Wrestling with Joey Lissish. Show them the, I'm, I'm embarrassed. I didn't have the book on me now. This, now this is this is book two right now. I got Chris, Jer Chris Jericho is a big part of this this book. That's that's obviously him stepping on my face right there. It's <laughs> Again, you got Ric Flair's in this, Hogan's in this, Ricky Steamboat's in this, uh, Chris Jericho's in this. It, Roddy Piper. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty small books that, you know, there's, like I said, this is the second book in a series, super fun, read fast, read, please give it, give it, give it a look. Absolutely. And we'll put a link, I'll put a link on my interview link with you. Um, and of course, because it's a bestseller, there's going to be a part three, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's in the works. Uh, you know, again, now that COVID's kind of you know, not disappearing, but you know, production starting yeah. up again. We're in the talks with a lot of networks and a lot and a lot of big producers and stuff. You know, we books were just supposed to be a filler until we can get the show on Netflix, on Amazon, you know, so on and so forth. So the show is going to be coming at you soon, full length episodes. The episodes that are on Prime right now and on my YouTube page, they're just five to seven minutes. But the, the full length show, if you love Joey Licious, wrestling with Joey Licious shorts, spread the word and, and you'll see us soon. Yes, uh, and that's what I was going to ask you. It's only available on Prime and YouTube now, correct? Correct. Okay, great. Talking about wrestling, we're going to go into music career now. One of the guys that you play with is one of the biggest wrestlers out there, biggest star, Chris Jericho. <laughs> Tell me about that. How the hell did you land that? You just got off a cruise with him. Yeah, oh, he's a great buddy. I'm, we, I'm not in Fozzie. We, you know, we've jammed together and stuff like right. that. So. Chris and I have been good friends for a, a many, many years. A uh, quick backstory on me for your listeners who, who don't know more about me. My band, ZO2, we toured with Kiss uh, back in early 2000s, 2004 Rock the Nation tour. We did a tour with Kiss. From there, you know, we did a lot of big tours, and we wind up getting our own television show called Z-Rock. Right. And two years, right? Two seasons of Z-Rock. Z-Rock was basically a story about our real lives. It wasn't, it wasn't a reality show. It was a scripted comedy, but it was based on our real lives, which were we were rock musicians at night and we were a kid's band during the day. We were really kids entertainers. We would play birthday parties, bar mitzvahs, christenings, anything you could name. We would play that and then fund the to fund the band and go on tour and, and you know, go on tour with the Scorpions and, and Kiss and all these other crazy bands. And it turned out, a, a, you know, an agent from William Morris, which is one of the biggest agencies in the, in the country, saw us at one of these kids parties and they're like what the hell are you guys doing here you know we look like this long hair rock and roll look we didn't look like the wiggles told them our story long story short a year about a year and a half later we had our own tv show on ifc number one rated show in ifc history that's where i met chris jericho the the, the concept of the show was we were this band but we always had these crazy guest stars on from joan rivers gilbert godfrey dave navarro 
Daryl nope. Hall, D. Snyder, and of course, Chris Jericho was on one of those episodes. So that's my history with Chris. We met on the set of Xerox and really became friends ever since. Now, when you what's the difference when you play him with Chris Jericho and him and Fozzie? Like, like you're friends with PJ. PJ plays with him and Fozzie. But what's the difference with a Chris Jericho show and a Fozzie show? So the, the stuff that I've done with Chris Jericho's cruise, I've been on the cruise with a cover band. Jericho will just come up and jam with us for a couple songs. It's not a full set with Chris. Chris comes up and jams. Guys from Striper come up and jam. Anyone who's around, we, we try to get some of the AEW wrestlers on stage with us. It's just a lot of fun. We just jam. Fozzie is a complete other thing. Right, right. Yeah, I had the link. I put the link up today with you jamming on one of the cruises with Orange. Uh... Orange Cassidy, yeah, yeah. Orange Cassidy, yeah. That was yeah. great. And you were yeah, doing there's, the a ki- there's a killer version of us doing breaking the uh breaking the law with Michael Sweet too. It's ah uh, killer. Michael Sweet, Striper, one of my favorite bands of all time. Yeah, he's I I like I'm working on getting him on the show, and they of course recording a new album. Yes, um, he's he's always doing something. But let's talk about ZO2 because and of course you know I'm a huge Kiss fan as as you are, and ZO2 were on tour with Kiss for three months. Right? Was it three yeah. months? Yeah. Almost four. Yeah. Cra- crazy time. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm not going to ask you the standard questions. I'm going to ask you the fan <laughs> questions. <laughs> I want to okay. give it to me. Did, did you get to see behind the curtain? Oh, my God. Of course. I mean, all the time. I, again, you know, at first, you know, it was very. So uh, my little backstory, I'm the biggest Kiss fan in the world. Grew up a Kiss fan. I don't so know. I don't know. So Kiss at Madison Square Garden, five years old, uh, Dynasty tour. I was blown away that Christmas, asked for drums for my birthday, for Christmas, got them, started playing right away. Just literally started playing drums when I was five because of that Kiss Dynasty show and really have been obsessed with them ever since. So when this opportunity, you know, we formed our band ZO2, we were playing, you know, we only had about 15 shows under our belt, unsigned band. We produced our own CD. This is around 2003 through 2004. We got the call. Paul Stanley got a copy of our CD. A band just dropped off the bill with Kiss and Poison, called us up and said, hey, guys, interested in doing, you know, uh, 40 dates with us this summer? Uh, 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 Let me think about it. Yeah, okay. I still have the email. It's like, holy shit. What the fuck are you talking about? We're in. Sign us up. That's a movie in itself. We didn't know how we were going to do it. We didn't know we couldn't afford a tour bus. We we got we were originally going to do it in a van. We wound up getting an RV. Best summer of our lives. You know, three kids on tour with their favorite band of all time, wow. opening for Kiss and Poison. Sold out every night. All the sheds sold out. Incredible. You know, and and it you know was very surreal at first, but you know after a while we became friends with them. Of course, we saw behind the curtain every day. We'd peek our heads in, and they would scream at us, and you know we we. Hung out with them backstage, had dinner with, you know, lunch or dinner with Gene every day. Great time. Now, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm a pro- I was a kid that always stood in this room, read all the liner notes, you know, lo- looked at the pictures, knew all the lyrics. And, and I always says, if I ever met them, I'm, I would ask them this. I would ask them that. Did, did you when, when you met when you met Gene and Paul, let's say, for instance, what did they come as advertised? Were you a little discouraged by them? Did they have their moods? You know, you know, they always say never meet your your heroes because they're going to disappoint you. Right. I couldn't say more the opposite than what happened with Kiss. You know, we we went in there. You know, we had met them once or twice before in passing and other stuff. But they, t- you know, Paul got us the tour. He's the one who asked us to be on tour. Tommy and Eric were also on this tour. It was the first tour with both of them. Yeah, what was that? 2003, Rock the Nation? 2000, 2004, yep, Rock 2004. the Nation. 2004. And... But, you know, Paul is a sweetheart, but, you know, Paul keeps to himself a little yeah. bit. We, still, we had plenty of interaction with Paul. He would blast me with picks during sound check. I had a cut on my nose for about two weeks wow. from him blasting me with a pick. We had a great time. But Gene, you know, for everyone that says bad, bad things about Gene and Gene the businessman and Gene this, Gene is an absolute sweetheart. He took us under his wing and he, you know, he would search for us every day to kind of debate with because you know you know when you're a rich millionaire superstar people you have a lot of yes men around you yes and we for some reason we were just these goofy kids and we would never be yes men we would just 
we would be ourselves. So we would always debate with him. And, you know, the other two guys in my band were famous for debating Paulie and David Z. They, we would argue with Gene all day long about the stupidest thing. Anything you say, Gene would say the opposite. We would say, Gene, look at this beautiful blue sky today. Well, the sky is actually not blue. It's yeah. actually black. It's the atmosphere that makes it blue. And, you know, we would have these arguments every day, but it was so much fun. And I invented that, by the way. And I trademarked <laughs> the term blue sky. <laughs> <laughs> Blue Sky is now a, a, a Kiss Corporation. Right, right, right. Did they give you a did Gene or Paul give you any advice? Because you were like a relatively new band and you were just starting out. Did they tell you like how to get a guitar tone or how to get a drum sound or never musical advice? Really? A lot of business advice yet. Yeah, you know, they you know, they they would they watched us a couple times side stage before they got ready because you know we had poison on in between us. So they had a little extra time. So every once in a while I'd see them on the side of the curtain peeking out and watching us and stuff. So they were always very complimentary. The, before the very first show, I remember specifically both of them saying, guys, listen, we're going to tell you now, this is a KISS crowd. They're not going to like you. They don't like anyone but KISS. KISS fans come to see KISS. And I know that, being a KISS fan. Right. I've seen you know, 30, 40 KISS shows up until this point. I never went for the opening band. And if I did, I was probably like, oh, Jesus Christ, get off the stage already. But... That first show, and you know, you can watch the shows online. I have all the shows online and stuff. From that very first night, we got a standing ovation that first night. We awesome. we, we we did it every single night after that. And Gene and Paul were so complimentary of that to us. Did you get to meet Shannon? Oh my Shannon was there all the She's time. She's a sure. sweetheart. She's I met her. She's really, really sweetheart. nice. Gene's mom. I had lunch with Gene's mom a couple yeah. Of times. Yeah. Great. Or rest in there peace. Was, there was one instance, uh, when we were coming back home to a near our hometown in, in New Jersey and Jones Beach in New York, uh, we decided to give the crew all ZO2 t-shirts and sweatshirts for free on the arm. And we said, you know, let's just give them, you know, as a, as a, as a sign of goodwill. And, you know, we didn't plan it this way, but it turned out when we rolled into town, the, like those dates, all the whole crew had ZO2 shirts on. And nice. it looked like the crew was for us. And but but Gene, that was the Kiss crew. Uh, but Gene came over to us. He goes, very smart move, giving the crew the, the shirts. <laughs> it, look, it looks like your crew. I like that. I like that. Way to go. Well, ZO2 is having a little bit of a comeback. And you got a show coming up at the cutting room. And the <laughs> guess who the bass player is, guys? The animal, Marco Mendoza from Twisted Sister. This guy knows everybody. <laughs> Yeah, Mark's been a great friend of us for years. We we opened. I said Marco. Stuff. I'm sorry, Mark Mendoza. Yeah, Mar Mark Mendoza. Marco Marco Mendoza was on my show too, <laughs> from White Snake. Yeah, Mark's been a friend of ours for years. Um, but yeah, you know, we we had a tragedy a couple of years ago. Our bass player, uh, my singer's uh, brother David Z, who also played for the Trans Siberian Orchestra for 15 years, passed away. He was on the road with Adrenaline Mob. They had an accident on the side yeah, of the road. I remember uh, that trailer clipped their RV, and unfortunately, David passed away. Mm. And you know, we've been you know we've been in hibernation ever since then. There's nothing we would have never wanted to do anything with another bass player. David, you know, was the heart and soul of the band. We would have never wanted to do anything. And you know, we, we David's brother Paulie started a foundation for him to educate music and educate kids in music. It called the David Z Foundation. And through that, we've been holding fundraisers and, you know, we do jams and all this other stuff. So, you know, we were thinking, Paulie and I, to do some kind of ZO2 jam in honor of Dave and kind of get some guest bass players up and so on and so forth. Never thinking that it's, you know, a return of ZO2 or anything. And, you know, we when we approached Mark Mendoza to do maybe a song or two with us, it was his idea to actually do the whole show with us and maybe even become you know, part of ZO2 moving forward and, you know, took us back a little bit. You know, we were a little bit, you know, we didn't know what to say at first. And then Paulie and I discussed it and thought about it. And we said, you know what? Dave would want nothing more than that. Dave loved Mark. He's the biggest ball buster in the world. He used to always threaten to beat us up, Mark. And he put us in a triple headlock. He was like our crazy uncle. And, you know, we decided, you know what? Let's try it. Let's see. Let's see what we can do. Let's have some fun. We're not going to go full fledged ZO2 mode again and all this stuff. But we said, you know what? To keep our music and the name ZO2 alive in everyone's memory, let's do this with Mark. Mark we couldn't think of another a better guy to, to come on board and do this with us. And, you know, we're going to see how it goes. 
Awesome. Well, guys, look out for that. Uh, what's the day? March, right? It, uh, yeah, March seventh at the Cutting Room in New York City. It's a Monday night, but it's gonna it's a, it's an early show. It's a free show. All are welcome. Oh, you we can't ask, beat that. We ask for a small donation to the foundation if you can give it. If you can't, please come in, enjoy the show, support us. There's an all star jam after the show with a lot of big musicians. We didn't name who yet. It's we're still, you know, getting the tally. We're working on it. On, but ZO two goes on around eight. I got my students from School of Rock going on opening before us. I teach at School of Rock over in New Jersey. They're going to go on before us around 7. And then right after ZO2 is an all-star jam with everyone and anyone in the New York music scene. Awesome. Awesome. So I'll put I'll I'll put that link up as well. Well, now you know we're two we're huge Kiss fans. So I got a couple I'm going to ask you a couple of Kiss questions. Actually, I'll ask you one Kiss question. Dude, I could talk Kiss all night. Come on, I, fire away. Well, let's go. Favorite Kiss song we're going to go through every era, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s. So, okay. I, I listen, you got to pick one. Right. These, obviously, you know, these are impossible questions. I know. But you listen. can ask me the same question tomorrow, and I have a different answer. All right. Your favorite right, song I'm, from the I'm, 70s today. Okay. Quickly, right now, from the 70s, I always go back to Love Gun. I awesome. think it's the quintessential Kiss song. I think it's perfect. Absolutely. That is, I have to agree with you. That or Room Service is my all-time oh, favorite 70s. Awesome. I mean, you can't go wrong. Uh, which if well, uh, I'm gonna have a whole other show about Kiss and Steve Brown offered to come on it, so I think I'm gonna have to have you as well. Yeah, well, big. He's a big. Oh, when we're on the road together, we talk Kiss all the time. We're, we're on yeah. a text thread. Me, Gre Jericho, PJ, all us. You know, right, and, and also Kiss. Steve Brown is talk Kiss. Also, Steve Brown is a big Yacht Rock Radio fan. Did you ever tell you that? <laughs> no, I didn't know that. On, on Sirius Satellite, Yacht Rock Radio, all the like That's great. soft. Soft rock songs, we were going sure. through them. Ambrosia, oh, Dan Fogelberg. <laughs> we were talking about that. That's funny. But, uh, okay, 80s. Give me one song. Always a big fan of Who Wants to Be Lonely. Really? Asylum. Yeah. Love, really, from Asylum. Love the song. Matter of fact, I seen, I seen an interview with you with an Asylum shirt on. Yeah, I'm a big 80s Kiss fan. I think 80s Kiss is very, song? very underrated. I think Absolutely. It's Listen, it's totally, it's a different band, different music than 70s Kiss. But I always say that's what I love about Kiss so much. If Kiss for 40 years, or almost 50 years now, Jesus Christ, sounded only like the first six records, I'd be tired of them by, by now. I loved that, you know, when I'm in the mood, I put the Elder on. When I'm in the mood, I'll put Creatures of the Night on. When I'm in the mood, yes. I'll put Carnival of Souls on. When I'm in the mood, I'll put the first record on. There's so many, it's like having... 30 different bands inside one band. Right. Well, Creatures of the Night has my favorite Kiss drum sound ever. Oh, it's incredible. Uh, Satan, yeah. Satan Sinner is one of the best drum songs of all time. Satan Sinner, yeah. And Dan I, like, I would have to go with Danger or Crazy Nights oh. is my 80s Kiss song. Crazy, Crazy it. Nights. Not the album, the song. A song okay. on Crazy Nights that always gets shit on that I love, My Way. Love it. My Way. Yep. Yeah. You know, Paul, Paul said it, those those albums... From Animalize through through um, Hot in the Shade, he said those were Paul's solo albums. Because yeah, well, well that's, that's what he says. Because of course, of course, he was doing a lot of the work on it. But I will tell you, you go back and listen to some of the Gene tracks on on those records, especially something like Asylum. Gene's songs are very underrated on those records. You like Burn, Bitch, Burn? Oh uh, yes. I don't care about lyrics. That's a great riff. Da, 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 gonna put my log in your fireplace. <laughs> That's one of the right. best lyrics ever. That's better than Shakespeare. Right? I'm gonna put my log in your fireplace. <laughs> I always fucking laugh at that one. Oh, it's amazing. All right, 90s. Uh, 90s kiss is tough. You know, I, I started moving, not moving away from it, but now uh, the grunge era. I like some of the revenge stuff. I like Carnival. 90s kiss, Jesus. You don't like Revenge as, a, as an album? No, I, I do, but I think it's a little of an overrated record. But oh. I'm going to go 90s song. I'm going to go Hate off of Carnival of Souls. Great, great fucking song. Great song. I like Carnival of Souls. Me too. I like it. Childhood's End was one of my, one of my favorite songs on there. Master and Slave, Jungle. Love Master and Slave, yeah. Childhood's End was was about um, Wendy O. Williams. I don't know. Did you know that? Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, he wrote that about Wendy Williams, who, who blew, you know, she <clears throat> committed suicide. Anyway, um, 90s, I'll go with, um, I got to go with, I, I got to go with, I just want to. 
from uh, Revenge. I love yeah. that song. Yeah, that's like a that's like a, uh, a topless boss song. <laughs> good track. Good track. <laughs> you know. All right, two thousand. We only got two. We only got two albums. Uh, in yeah, there. I'm, I, I, I'm not a big fan of Monster at all. Um, no, nah, yeah, me, yeah, me, me I, neither. I, I just, I think the production, I think they really half fast monster, but stuff on modern day Delilah, I think, is an absolute. When I heard that the first time, I said, Holy shit, it? kiss is back. I gotta go with Yes, I Know from Sonic Boom. I mean, yeah, I love that song, I and love it you know, I hate uh, speaking of kiss, they can't go out with that album, they can't end everything with that fucking album. You know what I mean? I'm with you. Can you tell me something being on the inside? You think that they're going to reunite? And I hate to use the word. You think they would reunite just four original members, record an album, and do a tour just them? No. That's possible? Never, right? I think there's... I don't even think they're going to do another record with anyone. I I think Kiss is done doing new records. Maybe they'll do a single for something. Who knows? Right. But I do think the, the original four will be on stage again at some point, whether it's the last show one show, one song, whatever it is, you'll see the four of them on stage together again. Oh, I, I agree. I agree they'll be on stage. Uh, maybe Peter will do Beth. Maybe, uh, you know, Ace will come out and do uh, Shock Me. Yeah. And then and then they'll all do Rock and Roll All Night or something Agreed. like that. Almost almost like a, a, a revamp of uh, Kiss Unplugged, what they did. Yes, exactly. Okay, last band I want to talk about, and I was telling you before, I think we. I ha- I'm the only... If you want to call it a podcast, rock, I call it my, this is a show uh, of interviewing the entire Eric Martin's big acoustic band. I had PJ on, I had Steve Brown on, I had Mr. Eric on, and now I have Joey on. Save the best for last, of course. Yes. And all Eric talked about was your hair. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Eric, I, Eric is a sweetheart. I love him. He's also a very big fan of mine. He, he, he fanboys over my, of, over Z rock. I love it. Talked, he talked nothing but nice things about you. Nothing but nice things. And he's did you great. know, Joey, he's from Queens. I I didn't know that before I started playing with him, but now I do, of course. I brought it out of him. Us East Coasters, we have that sarcastic way. Oh, about God, the obnoxiousness. The ball-busting stuff. You know, I, I, I meet a lot of people over, over my career, and not everyone has it. And then I started realizing, you know what? It's the East Coasters. That I can, you know, that I can really get along with. Relate to, right? To, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because we see everything. We saw everything. We, nothing shocks us. You right. know, and we bust balls all the time. It was funny because I had I had PJ on first. And I told, because I knew that he was from, he's from Kew Gardens. He stayed, he was there for five years before he moved out to Florida, or whatever it was, California. Um, And PJ goes, no, he's not. He's from, he's, he, he's from California. I said, no, he's from Queens. Do you know that PJ texted me the next day? He goes, you're right. He goes, he's told me he's from Queens. Wow, that's so great. That was funny. But tell me, what, what's going on with Eric? Uh, now, is that just solo acoustic stuff? Now, are you guys considered a band? Are you going to record music? Right. So I don't do... Eric does his own thing with just PJ acoustically. He does the big acoustic shows with PJ. Mm-hmm. And they have a little percussion player and stuff like that. We don't do that. Steve, and, Steve Brown and I don't do that. We do a full-fledged hard rock show we do all the mist full electric we do all the mr big hits we do all the trickster songs because pj and steve are there so we do a combination mr big trickster set and and it's it's phenomenal yes yes you know we we do a lot we do you know maybe you know 15 20 dates a year super fun uh we're gonna be in vegas la and uh i think north california next week not is it next week already jesus christ 17th 18th 19th it's, it's creeping up quick on us so if you're out in if you're out in vegas we'll be at vamps on the 17th we'll be at the whiskey a go-go the next night on the 18th and the canyon club on the 19th again mr big hits you know you don't you, people forget but the whole set is hits between the trickster songs and right the mr. Big songs, it's incredible and just to mention trickster i gotta tell my fans <laughs> steve brown is singing for pete loren and he sounds phenomenal he's it's great he sounds just like him P- steve's voice and pj's voice too which i you know i yeah. compliment those stupid bastards but they <laughs> both they, they and you know not only do they both sing lead incredible they do the trickster stuff incredibly but then they do all the mr big harmonies with eric it's it's phenomenal you know people don't realize what 
what it takes to play some of those songs and then sing some of those songs. So definitely come check it out. It's a great, great show. We do have a local show coming up in April, dude, that if we'd love to see at. It's in uh, New Jersey at Debonair Music Hall. Right. Now, um, oh, by the way, a uh, uh, friend of the show, Mr. Jim Crean. Yes. Tell me, told me to say hello to you. He's a friend, friend of mine, friend of the show. You played some dates with him for up in Rochester. Yes, sir. Phenomenal voice. Love him. Yeah, this lead singer of the Apathy Brothers. Um, let me ask you, and I, and I, I mentioned this before, you didn't answer. Is there any plans with Eric Martin to uh, record any music? We're always or Trixer. Yeah, we're always talking about it. We would love to do something as a as a as a whatever you want to call this group. It's so funny. People always ask us what's the name of the group. We never know. Eric likes to call us the knuckleheads from, from New Jersey or, you know, <laughs> the guys that smell like soup. You know, Chris Jericho named us that. And we always have these funny names. But we really, you know, we're really just Eric's band. We, we Eric Martin and Trickster. Right. But, yeah, we would we would love to do something. I think, you know, I, even just to have it to say, here's this lineup and here's what we can do. I think people would be really surprised. So maybe in the future, we'll see. Awesome. I really would look forward to that because Eric Martin was one of my – it still is one of my favorite vocalists. Steve Brown, I told him, I don't, like, you know me by now, I don't pull any punches. I don't bullshit. He's one of my favorite guitarists. Anybody that could fill in for both Phil Collin and Vivian Campbell and Def Leppard gets kudos in my book. Right. And then do all the Paul Gilbert stuff for the Mr. Right, for Big Mr. Stuff. Big. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? And, the, and produce and produce yeah, and sing. Yeah. Uh, and you know what I mean? Tell you something, if, if you haven't heard Eric sing live lately, Eric is... As good as he was in 1991. Oh yeah, and His looks the same. Is, I don't know how the hell he does it. He looks, he does. He looks like a kid still. It's son of a bitch. Sounds great. What a great nut nutcase. Yeah, sweetheart. But and, a, and still a phenomenal voice. I told him, I go, you, you're like the, the rocks, rock Dorian Gray. That he doesn't age. <laughs> and, and it's if you look at some YouTube clips, he'll just be walking through a parking lot, pick up a guitar, and just start singing for people. It's great. I love it. Oh, dude, that YouTube clip, I was standing right next to him. That was at Vamps in Vegas when he's just, that's Eric. He just holds court yeah. after a show. He wanted to, he'll tell stories and sing songs. And, you know, again, you know, these, these guys are, these guys are rock stars. You know, you know, I've done my own thing, but these guys are, are rock stars. And, you know, they don't go hiding in a dressing room or go run to the hotel or the bus. We go out, we do a couple of shows here and there. We have fun. We want to meet everyone and hang out. It's a good time. Right. Okay, Joe. So last question. Is there anybody in the rock world or in the wrestling world that you would like to have on your show or meet or play with? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, well, wrestling wise, Hulk Hogan is, is you know, will be a part of wrestling. Underlips. He's uh He's my big get, you know, he's already, you know, we've talked to his agent and stuff. He loves the project. He, Roddy Piper literally hand showed him his episode on his phone. Piper called me while he was doing it. Hogan loved it. Um, in the, in the rock world, I, I don't, I don't want to say this to sound cocky, but I I've either played with or hung out with all my idols, which is really a dream come true from, you know, hanging out with Peter Chris, you know, for two, three, four hours bullshitting at a time and playing, you know, with Ace and obviously touring with Kiss, getting to sound check with Paul Stanley singing and Gene singing. And it, it's been a it's been a crazy career. I, I, I can't be more thankful. But if I if I had a, if I had a choice, I would love me and Peter Chris to sit behind uh, two drum sets and jam a little bit. It would be nice. Wow. Yeah. I think he might be doing something because he came out with a couple of so a couple of uh, solos a couple of weeks ago. I guess he's yeah. trying to show everybody he can still play. And he can. Listen, you know, this guy's in his mid-70s now. 75. People, yeah, he can still play. He's still doing stuff that I'm I was rewinding those solos, say, oh shit, what was that little the hell was that? Yeah, what was that little thing he little diddle he did there? I like that. Yeah. Oh well, listen, everybody, I want to thank Joey Joey Licious. Casada for coming on the show. I almost stumbled for a bit, Joe, but I'm all right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> You're back, baby. You're back. Uh, I'm back. I'm back. Oh, Rocky. One, two. Th come on. Which Rocky's your favorite? Oh, Jesus. Give me one. Christ. I mean, that's like picking my favorite child. Jesus. Come Christ. on. Baby, give me one. I, if I got to go one, you know, I go number one. What's the matter with you? Really? Man? All right. Yeah. What? Well, listen, I'm a bit. I'm a, I'm a three guy. fan. I'm a three oh, fan. If, if my second would be three, a close second would be three. Yeah. Obviously, you got Thunderlips in there. You got yeah. 
what the hell more can you ask for? But yeah, my favorite. One, the, the emotion of one is just incredible. Three, and let me tell you something. Four is fucking underrated too. I just That's, saw four in the re-release in the theaters. It's yeah, incredible. That actually was the one that made the most money. That was the biggest selling Rocky film of all time. I'm a, I'm a sucker for, I love three. Uh, one, of course. And Rocky Balboa. I love oh, that love one. It. Love it. I love Rocky Balboa. But anyway, I'm going to do a special on Rockies and Kiss. Oh. And you're invited to both of them if you want. Come on. Steve, Steve Brown already is committed to the Kiss one. And I'm going to get another surprise guest, too. So I'll let you I'm know in. about that. But I'm anyway, in, I want to thank Joey Casada for coming on. We're going to check out his book, Wrestling with Joey Licious. We're going to check out all his YouTube clips. We're going to check out Eric Martin, uh, Mr. Big Acoustic. He's not playing with them, but he's playing with Trickster and Eric Martin. And ZO2, March 7th at the Cutting Room. And what else we got, Joe? Chris Jericho, anything with him happening? Uh, no, nothing coming up soon. I, I, You know, we're always in talks of, you know, doing something, hanging out, or just at least bullshitting. But, yeah, it's, you know, look me up on social media. I'm always up to something. Check me out all across Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, anything at Joey Casada, J-O-E-Y-C-A-S-S-A-T-A. Find me. I'm always posting what I'm up to, whether it's my new project or tour dates, or you'll find me at my YouTube page. Same thing at and Joey Casada. And if your kids want to learn how to play the drums, look him up. He's a teacher at the School of Rock in Jersey. What part of Jersey? I little. I'm in Middletown, New Jersey. I literally teach right here. There's look. There's some my kids' kits. My kit. Look at that. So, See that, Joey? We got. We're plugging everything here, bro. <laughs> we're right from here, Queens. Right? We're from Queens. We don't give a shit. Everything. You want to sell Tupperware on my show? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting my own meatball line next. I'll, we'll, 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 I'll come on and cook you some meatballs like Paul Stanley does on the cruise. Joey Licious Bolognese. How about that? <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Thanks a lot, Joey. I'm going to send you a message. Look out for it. Thanks, Ralph. Thanks. I'll post it and I'll, I'll let you know. Thank you very much, Joe. Bye now. Awesome, brother. Talk soon. All right.